Mm. All of that is just to show us what can throw us off our centre. Mm. And if we can remain calm and centred throughout it all, then we're pretty all right. Mm. And how do you <laughs> remain calm and centred throughout it all, do you think? Oh, it depends what's going on. Mm. So different techniques for different situations. Depends how stressful it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's seeing all the games people play and mm. uh, how, what to take on board and what not to take on board and what's a projection and what's somebody else's drama. Not yeah, yeah, it's very true. And if you are centred, you can weigh it up yes. in that moment. But if you're not, then you sort of like you blow up. And what, yeah, <laughs> and just, yeah, not playing dramas. I mean, I lots of have lots of drama in my artwork and in my plays and yeah. in my stuff. Yeah, in, in the music, but yeah. yeah, that's where it can stay. <laughs> and you do plays as well, do you? Yes, oh. like I write down e everyday life experiences. Yeah. And I, I um, put it all into my plays. Oh. Sometimes I change the names. Okay, and these plays oh, the people, people perform? Yeah, at the gallery. Oh wow, so they perform your plays as well as see your artwork? Yes, and sometimes people have their own little diary where they put their own hilarious experiences or different experiences in the play and then they bring that to the table. Oh, how gorgeous. So it's kind of a collaborative... It's a, it's a dark comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too excited, Marilla. It's dark. It's, well, you know, dark comedy. That's yeah. what it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's enjoyable. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> hilarious. And what happens when you have a, a deadline and you have to get the work done by, say, the fifth, you know, whatever month at 5 p.m. on Saturday? Can you work under pressure with your painting? Well... I don't sleep and I drink lots and lots of coffee, mm. which is really not good. Mm -hmm. Spirulina tablets would do a much better <laughs> job. <laughs> or fresh fruit and vegetables. That, that'd be even better, but yeah. that's pushing it. <laughs> that's, that's going on. No, overboard. just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But um, yes, I, I, I do work under pressure. I do all nighters yeah. and listen to audio tapes and lots of music. Yeah. Do you find it helps to have a bit of a deadline and a bit of pressure to do the work or not? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes not. Yeah, because sometimes you'd like to do it like in peace and relax, but then sometimes it's good motivation. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes the job wouldn't get done on time if it wasn't for the deadlines. Yeah. I'll do it in a minute. I've just got to have a cigarette and a <laughs> coffee. <laughs> And a cake, and maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Oh, okay. Well, that's beautiful that you, you've got such so much happening with this art school, with plays, and there, there's music you're doing as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm just learning. Yeah. So I'm a beginner. Oh, beautiful. Um. So I know what some of my stu students are going through who learn from scratch how to paint. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I'm learning music. Mm, okay. And th at these exhibitions, you have the plays happening at the same time as the artwork and the music. Is that right? Well, we run different events um, and we often have performing artists and musicians. I have had a few exhibition openings with musicians but then and, and performing arts and that, but I tend not to combine the two anymore mm -hmm. because it just turns out to be one big party and then everybody forgets about the artwork. <laughs> the most important <laughs> thing they're there for. <laughs> yes, so now an exhibition opening is just an exhibition opening. Right, okay. So. Beautiful. Anyway, we'll continue when we get back. We've got to go to a break now. You're watching Visions. Stay with us. We'll be back with more very shortly. Welcome back to Visions. I'm Mirella Rich. If you've just joined us, we're here with Bonnie Hutt, who is an artist. Welcome back to the program, Bonnie. Thank you. Can you tell us, where do you get inspired for your paintings? Do you look at photos, books, or go to places? Well, each painting I do has a different story behind it. Sometimes I paint something specific, like I've painted sacred geometry paintings or... <clears throat> for a specific purpose or mythology mm. stories and sometimes I just paint without thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I take photos which inspire me and then I get them printed and 
um, well, what I do is I often start off with a photo or a, a still life. Yeah. And then um, the painting eventually takes off on its own into a different direction. Oh, beautiful. And you say that painting is kind of like a meditation. Can you tell us how this works for you? Well, it's how I teach my students as an example. Um, when you are walking around, the mind likes to judge and label everything, which uses up enormous amounts of energy. Um, you think, there's a tree, what do I think about it? There's a car, what do I think about it? We've always got to have an opinion. Um, to paint and draw, for example, a beggar lying on the side of the road, you will be looking at that beggar in terms of shape and tone only. <laughs> yeah. So judgment goes out of the window. Mm. Um, in to, and then the rest, of course, comes from the subconscious mind, which is a blank, which is blank. Mm. Um, so yeah, you've got to really quieten the mind and get rid of a lot of the garbage chatter mm. in order to see things simply. Yeah. And do you only paint when you feel inspired? No. If I only painted when I felt inspired, I'd say at least two thirds of my paintings wouldn't have been done mm. in my life. Like mm -hmm. I feel pretty inspired at the moment, mm. but I've gone through patches in my life where I hadn't felt inspired. Mm. So you just do it anyway. Um, you just put that painting on that easel, get the paints out. If you don't feel inspired, you still sit there. You force yourself to sit there for at least 10 minutes. And then after half an hour, you start to feel very inspired. Okay, so you actually force yourself to get started. And then the inspiration, when it's difficult, when the, then the inspiration comes a bit stronger or the motivation comes a bit later. Yeah, so it's a bit more discipline. Mm. Um, like anything really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because you, you go through phases in your life and if you just do things when you feel like doing it, you most of the time you won't do it. Mm, exactly, yeah. <coughs> it's like they say with children, if, the ch if you let the children decide if they're going to go to school or not, they're not going to want to go or they're not going to want to eat their vegetables or something. So you've got to take control. Yeah, because what is important is momentum, not motivation. Mm. So motivation comes and goes I mean yeah motivation comes and goes but momentum rises mm. you get more inspiration as you as go you along. get started yeah yeah that's right and tell us about the painting that you've got here about subconscious your subconscious mind or something you were saying um, it's called subconscious spirit mm. this painting I actually painted it a long time ago like 12 years ago oh, wow. it's, it's been published in it yeah wow. um, <coughs> uh, basically it's just about the element of water because I d do quite a bit of painting about the um, six elements. Mm. And um, yeah, the element of water being emotion and uh, also death, what is hidden. And yeah, what's going on in the subconscious because the subconscious mind rules the ship. Mm. So we can often tell our conscious mind all sorts of things to mm. try and change things. But if it's not resonating with the subconscious mind, nothing gets changed. Mm, that's good. Have you found you've learnt a lot actually uh, mentally as well through painting? Uh, yes. Also, painting and any art form really teaches you who you are. Mm. So it, with every single choice you make, because mm. you've got to say what colours do I like, what subject matter do I like, what you know, what, who am I? Yeah. And what's your vision for the future for your painting and your artwork and where do you like to, where would you like to see it all going? Um, I would like artists to start appreciating themselves and their profound work and um, for us to create the reality that we prefer instead of just accepting whatever reality is being thrown at us mm. um, because artists of all kinds um, can think outside of the square and can show other people to think outside of the square. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And now how many years have you actually been a professional artist for? 
Well, the term professional is a difficult one to define, mm. I suppose. Um, yes, I, I mean, I've been painting all my life, yeah. but yeah, that, that, that's, I suppose I sold my first painting uh, probably 10 years ago. Wow. And now do people actually ask you to paint specific things for them? Does that ever happen? Yes, a lot. Mm. I, I do do a lot of uh, commission work, Beautiful. Um, which is quite interesting, mm. some of the stuff people ask me to paint. Um, do you have a favourite painting? Um, oh, maybe the Egyptian with the cat. Oh, okay, yeah. And what was that inspired by? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know. I <laughs> think it comes from a past life. <laughs> ah, wow. Well, thanks so much for coming on the program, Bonnie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and sharing all your artwork and your insights with us. Thanks. Thanks for being, letting me be here. A pleasure. You've been watching Visions. I'm Mirella Rich and our guest was Bonnie Hart. I hope you enjoyed the program and we'll see you again soon.